Now, the majority of monoclonal antibodies are produced as recombinant proteins um, in show cells that are cultivated in bioreactors. So that's a lot of mumbo jumbo. Um, so what recombinant proteins are, um, are there, you, you have DNA that, um, trans, uh, which, which will produce a protein, um, and you actually insert that into a cell, and you can make that cell overexpress your protein of interest. And you can have it produce lots and lots of proteins um, by cultivating those cells in bioreactors. Now, what bioreactors are, you can think of them kind of like um, the body. So the body is made up of lots and lots of cells, right? And the body, you are uptaking oxygen, you have to take in nutrients, and then you excrete waste. So what a bioreactor does is basically does that in a, um, in a, uh, Synthetic fat. I don't know. Um, what the bioreactor is, is basically just trying to mimic that. So we feed it in oxygen, we feed, we feed it in uh, a nutrient source, um, we feed it in glucose, um, we have media, um, and then it excretes um, waste like lactate and ammonia. Okay, so um, we have our, uh, so our monoclonal antibodies, they're typically produced in bioreactors um, in, uh, in industry. Now, um, when the, uh, when, the, when the protein is produced, um, the FDA, they have a lot of regulations on controlling to make sure that the quality of that protein is what you, um, you, know, what you want and that it's doing what you should. Um, so these are things like your biological activity, the purity, the toxicity. Now, the industry right now, they assure these quality, assure, they assure these properties by offline um, product quality control assays. But as you can imagine, um, so all of this stuff is done in batch. So we produce one batch of protein, um, and then we start another batch. And so you can imagine that there's a lot of differences between batches of proteins. Uh, and the problem with these offline quality control assays is that if one of these um, critical product quality attributes falls out of spec, the entire batch has to be discarded because of regulatory concerns, because you don't know if the quality is actually what you want it to be. Um, and so as you can imagine, it's a huge waste of time and resources, et cetera. So what my research is trying to do is we're trying to bring these quality assurance practices online. So during the actual production, we want to assure that all of these uh, product quality attributes are where they should be. Um, but protein production is a very, very complicated process um, there's a lot of variability, um, and so it, there's still a lot of questions. How do you actually implement online product quality control for something that's as variable as now production? So um, there's a lot of factors that affect the biological activity of a MAM, but glycosylation um, has been termed, it's, it's arguably the most important. Now, what is glycosylation? So um, glycosylation, if you kind of break it down, glyco, it means sugar. So basically, it's the attachment of a bunch of sugars to your protein. Um, and so a carbohydrate is just another word for, um, for sugars. So here we have a diagram of a monoclonal antibody. And um, so there's um, a few different chains. Um, this is known as the heavy chain. This is the light chain. Um, the there's, um, I, I said that the monoclonal antibody has a high specificity for an antigen. The antigen binds in this region, and the um, amino acid sequence for the protein, um, this can be variable, but the rest of the protein is actually constant. Now, this carbohydrate chain, the glycosylation pattern, it binds um, in this um, FC region here, which is um, the constant re region. And so it causes a bowing of the, um, of the monoclonal antibody. And this bowing actually affects a lot of the biological properties of the monoclonal antibody. So you can imagine that between batches of your monoclonal antibody, you need to maintain a consistent glycosylation pattern, right? Um, but now the problem with that is that glycosylation is, um, a, ver is a very variable process. So, um, so you guys, someone said that they know, um, you know, so you have DNA that goes to RNA, which goes to protein, right? 
And so you have DNA, right, where you have all of your nucleic acids. And DNA replication, you get the same exact strand when you replicate DNA, right? Because you have your template strand, and then you replicate your, um, your DNA, right? And then when you make protein, your protein has a template of the RNA strand, right? You guys are looking at me at, like you have zero headlights. Is this making any sense to you guys? Yeah? Anybody want to ask any questions right any, now? Any questions on, on now? No? Did you do band at UMass? Did I do band at UMass? No, I did not. Oh. Uh, why do you, do you know someone that went to UMass? Um, I did the Park Strawberry Academy. Oh, cool. Yeah, UMass band is, um, is very, very well known. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's a really great school. Okay, but any questions about the research? <laughs> yes. Uh, what was that monoclonal antibody? Yeah, second slide. So are those um, medicines produced to target one specific symptom? Or? So they are, so it depends on what the monoclonal antibody is produced for. Um, some of them are produced um, so that they bind to a specific antigen, um, whether it be, um, you know, there's a foreign protein that's associated with the disease or something like that. Um, others, it, it's actually this um, FC region, the constant region, um, because this actually, it binds to um, FC receptors, um, and that's what's known as the effector function. And for some diseases, um, the FC receptor is malfunctioning or whatnot, and so um, this antibody actually, it, it binds, and, and um, it, it really depends on which, what, what product it is, what the actual antibody is doing in the body. Um, it, it can affect the, uh, uh, have you, uh, what is it, uh, like immunogenicity, um, when you uh, introduce a foreign protein and all kinds of, your, form, your antibodies kind of um, okay. attack it. Um, you can kind of think of it as a similar process. Okay, any other questions? No? Okay. Am I completely losing you guys? Are you interested? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so, so with um, glycosylation, we don't actually have a template to make this carbohydrate chain. Basically what happens is that you've got, um, so we've got like certain enzymes, so we'll call this like an enzyme. This is a sugar monomer, um, and uh, I don't know, here's our, here's our protein. And basically you have all the, you have a bunch of different sugar monomers around, you have a bunch of different enzymes, and basically what carbohydrate is formed is what is actually close to the protein at one time. So, and each of these enzymes can actually do a bunch of different reactions. So you can get a whole <laughs> bunch of different carbohydrate chains um, based on what's actually available in the cell. Um, 